Higher order functions in Swift are a great tool that we can use to get the same results with fewer lines of code. And as you'll see in the upcoming videos, their purpose is to act on the contained elements in various ways. In this series of videos, we'll be looking at nine commonly used higher order functions in Swift. I hope by the end of these videos that you'll be able to apply what you learned to make your code smaller and indeed easier to read. The first one we're going to look at in this first video are the map functions map, compact map, and flat map. Let's first consider arrays. Here we have an array of integers. And I'd like to generate a second array that is an array of double the values of each item in this array. Let's first explore it using a for in loop. We can start by defining a new empty array of int called double numbers. And now we can loop through our numbers array and double each value and append it to the double numbers array. Now we have a new array with the six elements as before, but each value is doubled. This requires four lines of code, but it works well. Let's try using the map function on arrays. The map function returns a new collection with the same number of elements, transforming each member of the existing collection. Typing numbers.map presents us with code completion, and if we tap enter or return on our keyboard, Xcode recognizes this as a trailing closure, so it removes the extra bracket and parentheses at the end and provides us with the trailing closure syntax, where we have two placeholders, one for int, and one for code, and a generic return type variable. For the first placeholder, we can create a variable that will represent the given value in our array. So let's just use number. And the return type of the transform number is going to be another integer. So we can specify that in place of t. In our code, we can return the number times 2. Think of the closure as the function that operates on every value in the numbers array. In closures, we just leave off the func keyword and the type declaration in the argument and use in instead of surrounding our code with parentheses. We've reduced the number of lines in our code now by one. We can do better than this though. Let me comment out this and paste it in below. First of all, we can remove the return keyword because in single line closures that return a value, we're allowed to omit the return keyword and we get the same result. For our second variation, because the map closure is passed as an argument to a method, Swift can infer the types of its parameters and the type of the value it returns. So let's remove this part and let Swift infer the return type. Again, our code works just the same. And finally, we can use shorthand argument names. Swift automatically provides shorthand argument names to inline closures, which can be used to refer to the values of the closure's arguments. We can use $0 as the argument, and this allows us to remove the argument and in portion entirely and replace the number with $0. It's also customary to write this all on a single line. This gives us incredibly concise code, and it's very readable. Let's take a look at a somewhat more complex array. This is an array of three arrays, each with two elements. What I want to do is return a new array that will contain three elements, same number of elements that's in our original array, but there to be the sum of the two values in each of the element arrays. So 6, 16, and 26. Well, this is a job for map. Let's start back at the beginning again and see how we can reduce the code. We'll start by creating a variable called sums, and we'll assign it a mapping of the pairs array. The code completion shows us that our first parameter must be an array of integers, and we know that the transformation will return an int, so we can specify that. But I'm going to let Swift figure that out for me, so I'm just going to remove that and let inference happen. The code's simple. It's just pair 0 plus p 
pair one and running it in the playground, we see we get the corresponding array of three integers as expected. So we can even take this further by using our shorthand syntax and we'll remove pair in completely and replace pair with dollar zero and shorten it up. This time we're going to look at a array of two arrays, but the number of elements in each array is different. It's unpredictable, but we still want the sum to be returned to create a new array of integers. So we can start off exactly the same way as before. We'll create our variable for our argument and see if Swift will infer the return type. So let's just remove this now. Within the body, in order to build the sum, I can declare a variable called sum and set it equal to zero, and then step through each of the values in the group, adding it to the sum, and then finally returning the sum. Now later in the series, we'll be using another higher order function called reduce to simplify the sum process, but for now, let's assume that we don't know anything about that. This gives us an error, however. The generic parameter t can't be inferred. And that's because our closure is much more complex now than a single line, and the return type can't be inferred. So we need to add back the return type for the transform value. So we have to specify that return value is an int. Running in the playground now provides us with our array of two integers, 24 and 12. Your arrays can be of any type and can transform the type into whatever you want, basically. Consider this array of strings. What I'd want to do is convert each of the values to its corresponding integer value, if possible. For this, we can use map and the int function. Let's assume nothing and try the full version first and see what we can do with it. This gives an error value of optional type int must be unwrapped to value of type int. And that's because we're specifying that the return value must be an int when in fact it could fail since trying to make an int out of TWO won't work. We need to change the return value to an optional. Let's try the shorthand way by removing the argument in portion and using dollar zero for our argument and compress it to a single line. We can see that there is no error and Swift can now infer the return type. No argument from Xcode. And in fact, when I look at the declaration of int values, I see that it's an array of optional ints, meaning that they can have a value or nil. And we see that in our display. Later on, we'll see how we can use a relative of the map function to deal with this by removing the nil values. But for now, let's assume that we want to keep the number of elements the same, but we don't want the values to be optional. In this case, we can use the nil coalescer to assign an integer value for the nil item. For example, let's say negative one. Now the values of an array are int and not an optional int. Before we leave arrays, let's take a look at an array of objects like this. Here we have an array of type user. What we would like to do is to create a new array of just the names. Well, that's very easy for map. We see as we create our map that our argument will be a user. And what we'd like to do is to transform that user by returning only the name property. And because this will be done with a single line of code, we can let Swift infer the return type, which will be a string. And so we'll use the shorthand argument of $0 to represent the user in the array and just return the name property. Great. Now let's just move on to dictionaries and sets. These are the average seasonal temperatures in my hometown of Vancouver. 
where we measure temperatures in degrees Celsius. What I'd like to do is to map a new dictionary from this dictionary for my American friends to change the values to Fahrenheit, but keep the keys the same. So we'll start with our long form for map and see what we can do. We'll make sure we choose map and not map values. This is another higher order function that will only map the values and return an array rather than a dictionary. This time we get two placeholders for our argument, the key and the value. So let's give these values a name and see if Swift can infer that our return type should be another dictionary of the same type. To return a dictionary, we'll keep the same key value of season, and we'll calculate the new value by multiplying the temperature by 9, dividing by 5, and adding 32. Let's run this now. As you can see, fairly mild temperatures here on the west coast of Canada. Let's use the shorthand here, but because there are two arguments, we need to use $0 and $1. We'll comment out our code, repeat our mapping, but we'll remove the arguments in portion, but just use our shortcut argument names. For the next example, let's see how we can use the map function to help us create and populate models. For example, those familiar with Firebase will know that the Cloud Firestore data is built around a dictionary model, and it's quite easy to map the key values received from Firestore to a dictionary. If we have a model whose properties correspond to the key value pairs we get back from a Firebase query, we can use the map function to populate our models. For example, consider this dictionary. The first thing we need to do is create our model. So we'll create one called user with two properties, a name as a string and an age as an int. And now that we have our model, we can map our data dict values to a user. So let's just keep the arguments as key and value for now. And we'll use the structs memberwise initializer to create and return a user object. Now, since our closure is a single line, we can let Swift infer the return type, and we'll use our shortcut arguments, and we'll see that our users is an array of user. One line of code. Switching now to sets, let's consider this set of temperatures in Fahrenheit. We want to use map to convert them to a set of the equivalent Celsius temperatures. Well, no problem, I think. Let's see if we can jump right into the shorthand notation and use a single line of code for our return. We'll need to subtract 32 from our Fahrenheit value, which is the shorthand argument, and multiply that difference by 5, and then divide by 9. Looks like it's working. However, there's one thing that may come back to bite you. Cells temps is not a set. It's an array of integer, so you have to be aware of that. If you want to convert it back to a set, you can apply the set function to this new array. The last set of higher functions we're going to look at in this video are compact map and flat map. You use compact map when you receive an array of non-optional values, but your transformation produces an optional value. Recall our mapping that resulted in an array of optional ints. Let's repeat that here, where we convert the string values to their integer equivalents. This returns 1, nil, 3, 4, and nil. 
If we want to remove those optional values and return an array of int instead of the optional int, we can change map to compact map. It's as simple as that. Everything else you learned about map can be applied. If you want to maintain the size of the returned array, you must use map and either deal with the optionals or assign a value using the nil coalescing operator as we did in the first section. And finally, now flat map. And we use this method to receive a single level collection when your transformation produces a sequence or collection for each element. Let's revisit our group array again. If we want to extract all of those elements into a single array of int, we'll just use flat map. And we can use the shorthand argument because all we're doing is returning the actual element. This will be extremely useful, for example, if you have a number of arrays of integers of variable length and you want to sum or tally the entries. You can flat map all of the arrays and then, as we'll see in a later video, apply another higher order function called reduce to provide the tally. All of this will happen in a single line of code. Well, that's enough for this video. We'll continue on this series to cover other higher order functions like filter, sort, sorted, reduced, contains, and split. I have lots of other videos available and in the queue as well, so please check out the rest of my channel. You can also visit my website to see the apps that I have available on the App Store and visit my GitHub page to see what I have available as public repositories. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And ring the bell to get notified when I post new videos. I'm most active on Twitter, so please follow me there as well to find out what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching.